Hi there. My name is Marissa, and I'm a member of the training and support team here at Hawks Learning. Thank you so much for joining me for today's webinar, which is on editing a homework assignment. Over the next 20 minutes or so, I'll be walking you through the process of how you can make changes to your homework lessons you assign this term. If you happen to have any questions throughout my session, please feel free to chat those directly in the Q&A box located at the bottom center of Zoom, and I'll be sure to reserve some time at the end to address your questions. And with that, I'll go ahead and share my screen and get started. So I can start by going to teach.hawkslearning.com. I'm gonna input my credentials and sign on in. Upon signing in, I'm going to click into the course tile page that I want to modify a homework lesson. I'm going to go ahead and navigate to my assignments tab and under my assignments tab, I'm going to go to curriculum. Now, if you have maybe copied over your section course details um, or have created a master curriculum, you might see that template already applied here to your current section. If you do not have a current curriculum that is automatically applied, it might just say course default curriculum, in which case you can just click in, give it a name, save changes. I'm just going to go ahead and enter into my curriculum here. And I do want to talk about some of these global settings that you see here at the top. Um, some of the more popular features and these global settings really impact and enhance the student experience within the courseware. So you can adjust them as you see fit. The first one I wanna talk about is our required practice feature. So by checking off that required practice box, it will allow students to unsuccessfully attempt a certify one time before requiring that students enter into the practice mode and attempt 80% of those practice questions before they're able to re-enter into that certification. So what this does is it basically allows you um, to determine um, that if a student does not successfully master a certification, that you would just require that they enter into that um, practice mode and complete 80% of those practice questions. Now, these are completely adjustable. Um, if you want to allow students more than one attempt in that certify, you can certainly adjust the amount of unsuccessful attempts. Um, or if you want to adjust the percentage of questions within the practice mode that you would like for students to attempt. Now, mind you, it says attempt, not necessarily get correct. Um, you certainly could do that as well. This is just another nice feature to get those students engaged in that practice mode where they have those academic learning aids. So that might be a nice option to enable um, for this term. Another really nice feature is our enhanced practice. As you can see, our enhanced practice is in its beta phase still. And if you hover over that little eye icon, it gives you more of a description of your enhanced practice feature. But basically right now, it's still in that beta phase. It's a double blind study. So if you do opt for this feature to be enabled, then half of your students will be randomly selected and have this enhanced practice feature, while the other half of your students will have our traditional practice feature. That way we can compare the data and see how this enhanced practice feature um, impacts students' ability to get through that certification quicker, more easily. And basically what this enhanced practice session does is that it um, base, bases its um, questions, the sequence of questions students generate within the practice mode based on historical data and gives students questions they're actually ready to complete as opposed to um, you know, randomly providing them with a question. Another really great feature is our Flex Mastery. This allows a student to receive or rather uh, retry a missed question um, instead of receiving a strike if they get a question incorrect in that certification. So this is nice because it allows for that instant redemption for students. Um, you know, maybe they saw they made a silly mistake and see where they went wrong. And instead of receiving a strike, they're able to just um, have a new question generated with new values. Um, and instead of receiving a strike, they're able to utilize that flex mastery. So we typically limit that um, to one time per certification attempt, but you can certainly up that to two 
we would recommend keeping it at two or less. Um, you know, if a student keeps getting a question type wrong over and over again, we want to make sure that they get the adaptive remediation they need in that practice mode so that they can come back into that certification and demonstrate the mastery of the concept. Um, so that's some of the um, global features that um, are really great and really enhance a student's experience within the courseware itself. In order to, um, over here on the right-hand side, we also have a couple of other um, features, um, like allowing students to review certify attempts. Um, you can allow students to review all attempts, um, or you could um, opt to only have them review the last attempt. Um, we, by default, enable this because this is a really nice feature for students to make sure they're able to review their work, especially as they're preparing for higher stakes assessments. Um, also, allowing students to pause and resume certification sessions. You know, this is nice. Um, you can limit the number of pauses per lesson to three or however many you want to limit it limit them to, or you can make them unlimited. Um, you know, this is nice if a student starts the certification and needs to go to work or needs to go to class, they can just simply pause and re-enter into that certification exactly where they left off. So um, that's also something nice to consider as well. As we scroll down here, we'll see a lot of the logistics of the lessons themselves within your course. Um, you'll notice your lesson names are here the amount of questions and steps within each lesson are outlined here for you as well. The mastery level, um, you are able, we typically by default set mastery at about 80%, um, but you can certainly adjust that. Um, if you can do so on an individual basis, um, right here, for example, um, if I wanted to um, adjust this mastery level to let's say uh, 50%, I can certainly do that. That might be just a nice idea to do if you know there's a particular lesson that students have historically struggled with, proves to be more challenging. Um, you can maybe lower the mastery or upper the mastery level as well if you should see fit to do so. You can also adjust the lesson, que the question level order as well from low to high, high to low, or by serial number. We typically keep it randomized. Um, so again, these just provide you the overall logistics of all of the lessons here within your gradebook. Now I'm gonna go ahead and show you how you can actually modify the questions within the lessons themselves so that you can tailor them to the needs of your students and your course. So I'm just gonna go ahead and click into one of my lessons here. That's gonna open up my lesson builder tool. When this loads, you're gonna see a two panel screen here. On the left hand side is going to be my question bank, as you can see. The right hand side are the default set of questions that our content team has carefully curated to be representative of the objectives of the lesson. Now, it's always a great practice to look through the questions that are in that default assignment. These are the question types that will be in the practice and certify. Remember that practice is really designed to prepare students for that certification. Um, in that practice mode, you have that tutor button, you have other sorts of explain error, um, tutor, skip, try similar. You have different academic aids built into that practice mode to really help students both in terms of guiding them um, in the learning process as well as providing error specific feedback. So um, again, we do, um, again, have similar question types in that practice that they'll also see in Certify. Um, in order to um, adjust or modify the assignment themselves and the questions within the assignment, all, student, all you'll have to do is select um, the Add button next to any question that you would like to have added, um, and it will be added over to that uh, assignment. If I'm scrolling through here and seeing questions that I don't want to have included within this lesson, I can just go ahead and hit remove, and that'll remove it from the assignment as well. If I should want to, um, you know, include questions from uh, earlier or later chapter, as well as earlier or later um, lessons themselves, I can certainly um, select the lesson that I might want to 
pull a question from, maybe you want to include a few questions for review for students, and you can certainly um, scroll through them very easily using those little drop down arrows. And again, at, just to reiterate, um, if you would like to add questions, you'll just simply select add. If you want to remove questions from that homework assignment, you can just hit remove. A couple of other things here while we're here. Um, you can sort the questions however you'd like. Um, you can see the level of mastery in that upper right hand corner. Um, you can also select this gear icon that provides you with a couple of different options here. So I like to, this is a newer feature, the export assigned questions um, allows you to actually export your lesson to a Microsoft Word document. You from there can modify it as you need to. Um, you can also print it out. So if you want to have some of these questions and lessons handy in the classroom, you certainly can do so very easily by exporting assigned questions. Hopefully, you know, we hope this is just another way you and your students can engage with our materials in a really meaningful way. Um, we can also modify our learn screens, um, and this is where you would access that. You would just hit that little gear icon, hit open learn, and you're able to customize your learn screens for this particular lesson. It's going to take you to that landing page of our learn screen. Um, so our objectives are always front and center, that first page as you enter into that learn mode. As you can see here on the bottom, um, this text box will allow you to include any notes or charts, or if you want to include a link to an article or um, embed a video, you can certainly do that here. As you can see, this is a pretty traditional um, task bar list that will afford you the ability to customize your learn screen notes as you as as would serve your students best. You're also able to hide any screens um, within the learn mode. So if you don't cover certain areas within the lesson, you can just go ahead and hide those screens so that they won't be visible to students. Um, similarly, if you maybe have a note set that you really like and has worked in the past and want to replace the learn screen, you can certainly do that as well. So um, those are just some ways that you can really have fun and customize your learn screen and your lessons in general to make them more conducive to your students and course set up. I'm gonna exit out of our learn mode here and it's gonna bring us back to our lesson builder tool. Now, if you do make any changes to your lessons, just be sure to always save changes, bottom right hand corner, and those changes will be saved for you. Um, again, by Xing out of your lesson builder tool, it's going to bring you back to that default curriculum landing page here. Um, again, you can always come back on in and adjust any other lesson as you see fit um, and also um, certainly enable or disable any of these global settings here at the top for you. So that about wraps up how you can modify lessons um, and homework assignments. I'm just going to pause here and see if there are any questions that have come in. If something is removed from an assignment, is that if something is removed from an assignment, is that type of question then job dropped from practice and certify? So yeah, so if you are in your lesson and you decide you want to remove a question, um, from that um, lesson, from that homework assignment, um, then that question type will be dropped from both the practice and certify. If you should want to maybe have it in the practice but not the certify, you can hit that drop down and put that in practice only or certify only. Um, but yeah, so again, anyone that you remove, that question type will be removed from the homework lesson themselves. Any other questions that are coming in? That's a great question. I'll just pause one more minute. If anything comes on in, please feel free.
Well, thank you so much for joining us today. I hope that this was helpful. And please let me know or let us know if you have any other questions or anything we can help with. We're really looking forward to a great school year. So thanks so much for being here with us and have a wonderful day.